burial mounds in North Korea. Over 1,500 years old, they bear witness to an ancient history. They tell of wars, of kings, and of an empire that stretched from Manchuria to present-day South Korea, Koguryo. North Korea today, a state with an omnipresent leader and a disciplined people. The North Koreans see their roots in the Koguryo Empire. In their eyes, it was a warlike realm with a powerful army that solved problems of its own accord. Every child in North Korea knows this motif, the mausoleum of King Tong Myong. A popular image, the monarch's final resting place is constantly being restored and extended. After all, he is regarded as the founding father of the Korean nation. 37 years before the birth of Christ, the Son of Heaven and the Water Gods established an empire that was to survive for 700 years. King Tong Myong has interested this man ever since he was a boy. Today, Kim In Chol is a historian and one of the few people to have access to all the tombs. So far, more than a hundred have been discovered in North Korea. One of the best preserved is the Kangso tomb not far from Pyongyang. The 12 meter high mound contains mysterious religious paintings. Since being declared a World Heritage Site, the tomb has been guarded round the clock. It's dark, cramped and a bit musty in here. But Mr. Kim doesn't mind. He only has eyes for the frescoes. Despite their great age, they look as if they were painted only yesterday. protective glass is designed to keep the pigments fresh. The deceased is guarded by four deities, mythological figures painted straight onto the polished stone wall, a dragon, a phoenix, a turtle and a snake. Unlike today, back then people here were deeply religious. They believed in a life after death. The tutelary gods were supposed to ensure that the deceased could enjoy the hereafter in peace. The snake and the turtle stand for the eternal process of change, for yin and yang, for tao, the path that is never clear. Burial mounds like this were reserved for kings and figures of high standing. The abundant tomb furnishings were all plundered. Only the mural paintings remained. The doctrine of Taoism was not the only religion. From China, Buddhism came to the Korean peninsula and in AD 372 was declared the state religion. Under the protection of the king, monasteries and temples were built, like Kwangbop Temple near the North Korean capital Pyongyang. The temple burned down many times, but there is historical documentation of the ground plan. In 1990, at great cost, the North Korean government had the complex restored as a museum. The architecture is strictly symmetrical, with decorative wooden carvings and bright colors. In 
in communist North Korea, religion no longer plays a role. There are only a few monks here and there, and no earthly ears hear their prayers. In AD 427, the capital of the Koguryo Empire was moved to the banks of the Taedong River. Today, the city is called Pyongyang. With three million inhabitants, it's the capital of North Korea. A hundred thousand people lived here even in Koguryo times. Then, as now, their faces were molded by the harsh climate and the constant fear of invasion. Proud and withdrawn, they were ever ready to defend the dynasty. Like North Korea today, Koguryo was a tightly organized state, albeit a feudal society with a king at its head. Pyongyang, a city of high-rise blocks and socialist monuments. A wooden city gate, the Portong Gate, still indicates the course of the city wall during the Koguryo era. The name Koguryo means land of fortresses. A warlike empire, Koguryo was itself often attacked. History records 145 conflicts. Fortifications were built at all strategically important locations. Kim, the historian, knows 200 of them. The cost of defending the empire must have been enormous. There was a dual defensive system. A fortified town and a mountain fortress were always located close together. When it was no longer possible to hold the town, the entire population, from the king down to the peasantry, withdrew behind the walls of the mountain fortress, which was easier to defend. Invaders sometimes came from the south, but usually from the north. In those days, war and defense must have been a constant challenge to people here. The martial art of Taekwondo involves total physical control, fighting effectively with the simplest of means. Speed, accuracy and surprise are vital elements. Taekwondo has its origins in the Koguryo era. Since the Koguryo Epoch is regarded as the cradle of Korean culture, it has been given a very special place in the Central History Museum in Pyongyang. The tomb with the greatest abundance of art has been faithfully reconstructed and the paintings transferred on a scale of one to one. Here, proportions can be studied from close up. Official business conducted under a baldachin. His insignia and pose show that this man was a ruler. But who he really was is still a matter of dispute. The clothing and hairstyle seem to be Chinese. Was he perhaps an envoy from China? Or a king, after all, who resided in a palace like this, sealed off from the outside world and living in comfort in spacious rooms with underfloor heating? The palaces of the Sons of Heaven were magnificent. But is this really what they look like? Nothing has remained of Koguryo apart from the mural art and a few ancient manuscripts. And it is they that form the basis of the little knowledge we have of life in Koguryo. People were ruled in line with the strictest of laws. The slightest misdemeanors met with draconian punishment. Thieves had to pay back tenfold the value of what they had stolen. The people of Koguryo did not even pick up anything they saw lying on the ground. 
they lived in huts with straw roofs. But the streets, it is said, were as wide even then as they are today. Six royal horse-drawn carriages could travel alongside one another. Koguryo's trade network extended as far as southern China, Japan, Central Asia and Siberia. The Taedong River was one of the most important transport arteries. People lived off rice. Supply problems were common. Arable land was scarce, just like it is today. The mountainous country offered little scope for farming. A kitchen scene from the middle of the fourth century, with a rice pot and a hearth. The tombs were decorated with realistic pictures of everyday life, which still looks very much the same in villages today. Kim, our historian, gets on well with tomb guards all over the country. No North Korean would ever refuse the offer of malt beer and kimchi, the national dish made from white cabbage. Thus fortified, carrying out research in the deep crypt at Anak is a lot easier. Discovered in 1949, the tomb is the biggest found so far. The four sentinel figures are not so well preserved. When the plaster flakes off, it takes the pigments with it. A great deal of investment and international cooperation will be needed to save this World Heritage Site. Warriors, armor and bronze swords. Koguryo was a military state. The king kept a standing army of 50,000 soldiers which, if necessary, could be increased to 200,000. Men equipped with bows, spears and catapults. Military thinking pervaded all areas of life. Surrounded by enemies, people fought on all stages, always and everywhere. Characterized by perfect choreography, this performance is part of the Arirang Culture Festival, at which North Korea celebrates itself and its glorious past. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea is proud of its world cultural heritage. After all, Koguryo was not only the first Korean empire, it was also the biggest and most powerful. In AD 668, the Koguryo Empire was toppled. Today, North Korea sees its late head of state, Kim Il-sung, as a descendant of Tong Myong, the first king of Koguryo, and as the successor to the ever-watchful defender of the Korean motherland.